Hi, welcome back to Charlie Talk. I'm John Sonderegger. With me is Senator Scott Roop and Representative Cynthia Davis. We're talking about the coming election and we're talking about state politics. Cynthia, uh, you have been, for the last few years, sort of the, the, the butt of a lot of jokes in the media. Uh, and I, what, is, what, what causes that? I mean, you've even made national news. You might say I share the stage with Sarah Palin, yeah. with Rush Limbaugh. You might say I share the stage with a few other conservatives who mm -hmm. typically are mocked by the left. Mm -hmm. So if I'm mocked by the left, I, I wear that as a badge of honor. I'm making people think. Mm -hmm. I call myself a change agent. Mm -hmm. And we're about to have a big change agent come up on August 3rd. Mm -hmm. But the best part is that if my opponent wants to join the left in the Riverfront Times and everything they stand for in mocking conservatives, it's going to put him in a very difficult corner. Did, did you join the left mocking her? No, no, I haven't, haven't said anything. Cynthia's comments, uh, you know, they come from her, her own Except words. Except on your Twitter, her own, uh, where you have to retweet what, what the Riverfront Times says, which also... Uh, there's other like, publications out there yeah. that have, you know, picked up on her own words, her own comments, mm -hmm. uh, that have, you know, been embarrassing to not only just the Republican Party, but to O'Fallon and St. Charles Hills County. But the um, and what they, ex excuse me, I, I didn't interrupt you when you were speaking. Um, but basically, she has made a lot of comments that have you know, been embarrassing to the, to the, to the area. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and just because someone picks it up and says something about it, and it shows up in the Post-Dispatch, it shows up in, in uh, Steve Pokin's uh, comments, it shows up on the Internet, uh, you, know, it's, it's, you have to stand by your own comments and your own words. Um, I stand by mine. I'm 110% proud of the, the things we have done for the, the district in the last four years. And, you know, if people take pot shots at me, I don't sit there and blame Cynthia. I just deal with them. Well, I'm glad to hear he's proud of all the mandates and bigger government bills that he's passed. So, yeah, maybe he's getting more bills passed, but is pandering the right way? I mean, while the, we're in the last week of session, he puts a sign on his office door saying, gone golfing. Is that how we want to govern? Do we want people who are going to write get out of jail free letters for their Democrat felon friends? If any of my friends in the Senate- Who, who did that? What oh, are you talking about? He wrote a letter on Senate stationery to the judge asking for Jeff Smith to get out of jail free because he committed a felony. Now, if any of my Senate colleagues should go to prison, I believe you have to do the time. I might offer to bake them cookies. And I might offer to visit them in prison, but I will not abuse my office by putting on my Senate stationery that I think he should get a leniency because he's what? Because he's a senator that makes him better than the rest of the people? I don't think so. Did you really try to get Jeff Smith out of jail free? No, I didn't try to get him out of jail free. There was an uh, individual that served in the Senate that made a you know, stupid mistake. And you know he paid a fifty thousand dollar fine, and they wanted to put him away in federal prison at a cost of fifty thousand dollars a year to the taxpayers. He had lost his job in the Senate. He lost his job at uh, WashU teaching. And so we said, "Is why are you going to charge uh, the taxpayers a hundred thousand dollars for two years when you can make him do con community service and educate the youth and that he'd done in the, the city of St. Louis? He should. He has the felony. He got convicted. Myself, Peter Kinder, the head of the party, numerous other Republicans in the House and the Senate, all said, "Yeah, that is a stupid waste of taxpayer." dollars this is what we would recommend that you would do and it was a simpling and in her comment that you know we're passing uh, mandates for feel-good legislation or, or, or whatever she said what she's referring to is that one out of a hundred kids in, in Missouri are being affected with autism and we finally stepped up and stopped the discrimination of families that are paying their premiums and paying their money to get coverage for autism and we're saying you're going to have to start providing these services so she may call that pandering for votes or feel-good legislation but we're affecting the lives of thousands of Missouri families tons here in St. Charles County for the better and it saves the taxpayers money in the long run from our social services and our education so I am proud of, of all the actions that I've uh, of passed and things that I've stood for and I think we're getting results for the Missouri taxpayer do you, uh, Cynthia, do you think uh, United States senators um, should be appointed by the state legislature as the Constitution originally said? Rather I am in favor of repealing the 17th Amendment, yes, because that's the last time the states got represented. You know, if Missouri didn't have the 17th Amendment, like what we passed in 1913, we wouldn't have Claire McCaskill, the senator, right now. And there would be no possibility of Robin Carnahan being the senator. We would have senators who represent us. We would have people who care about what is best for our state, not 
who pays the most and what lobbyists are donating and, and having it given away to the highest bidder. And the Blagojevich problem in Illinois happens every day. That's part of what this contest is about. Does big money buy our elections? Can honest, decent, principled people still win if they just stand on what's important to the people? I'm not getting a lot of big donations. He's getting $10,000 at a time. I'm getting $20, $50. I mean, it takes a lot of $25 checks to make up for a $10,000 check. But the best part is, I'm free as a bird. I don't owe anybody anything. And the, the lot, when somebody writes a check for $10,000, trust me, that is not a donation. That's an investment. They like to be able to donate big up front. Then when their issue comes up, they pull the string and everybody falls like dominoes and they get their money's worth back out of it. John, I have to, I have to comment on this because we have Kid Bond. We wouldn't have had Kip on. John Ashcroft, uh, you know, Jim Talent. These are fantastic guys that served for, uh, for the people. And she's sitting here saying we haven't been represented since uh, how many years ago? I mean, come on. We're telling you this is the voice of the people. The people are spoken. And I don't want to sit here and insult some of the great Republican senators that, that, that we have had. And I do find it interesting that, you know, I have not received any $10,000 uh, for this uh, thing. But Except today, from today, Rex Singfield. today, you just got a $26,000 contribution. It just came out on the ethics report today. No, that's from me. It wasn't from you. Yeah, it's a loan. It's a loan? Mm hmm. It's okay. a loan. I'm glad I was able to enlighten you. And not you know sure. why it's a loan? Because I care this much so you about letting it as people. Alone have a voice. Did you listen as a loan on the ethics thing? Yes, it's that important. There, our future is at stake. Well, let's talk about money. How much money do you have in your campaign coffers right now? Well, With I... With your 26,000, <laughs> how much? I, I'm not the treasurer and I can't give you an honest figure, but it's below 50,000, whereas he's had over 250,000, wouldn't you guess, by now? You're not going to say either? John, don't know either? one of the things that a senator has to do is you have to help grow the party. And one of the things I've been able to do is tr try to grow the Republican Party for the Missouri Senate. The last year I was one of the biggest uh, persons out trying to recruit and get good candidates. We picked up three Republican seats in the Missouri Senate in the worst, act worst uh, climate for Republicans two years ago. We were the only state in the country to make any type of gains for the Republican Party. So by going out and by doing the things that we need to do and helping our friends, then that's what, that's, what, that's what we're doing, is growing the party and, and expanding our conservative beliefs across the state. And you do that by getting good candidates, you do that by fundraising, and you help out your friends, and you, and you do that. And that's one of the things that we've been trying to do for the last four years, is expand the Republican majority and spread our message. And help out your friends is defined as money laundering. Okay. People donate to him, okay. and then he reshuffles it around. Uh, last, I think, ethics report showed somewhere around 60000 60000 Okay, we're going to take another break. When we come right back, we'll continue our discussion with Scott Roop and Cynthia Davis.